I don't think we really know what we're getting ourselves into. I kind of know what we're getting ourselves into and it's a lot. It's a lot. Damanur is a spiritual society. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. We are very normal people. Even if we do crazy things together, we can travel in time, speak with alien species. No, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do miracles. No, I like really want to know what what's going on here. Melodious chimes welcome visitor and citizen to Dan Manhua in the foothills of the Italian Alps. A bizarre complex. It's not a religious center, but represents a new way of living, an alternative lifestyle based on meditation and the study of magic and the paranormal. We are about to take you along with us on a bizarre and extraordinary experience that even months after it happened, we still struggle to explain. Hidden in the Italian Alps, we are immersing ourselves with an organization of 500 people that, among many other things, all believe they can travel in time. Oh, that's them. <laughs> Hello, I'm Thomas. Manta. Manta. Hi. Good to meet you. I need you to sign for because we will go underground and... Uh... Yeah, great. Hey. Hello. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Hello. The Damanhor people claim that they are creating a new model for the future of humankind. With temples built in secret underground over decades, they are primarily an eco-commune of people living together in houses containing upwards of 15 people. With families, single people, couples and elders all mixed together. Everyday life in Damanur is based on trust, kindness and sharing. But what makes this place strange are their supernatural beliefs and claims of their mastery of magic. They claim to have invented their own forms of hypnosis meditation, built tools allowing plants to play music, and devised healing tools that look more out of science fiction than from this earth. And so with endless questions and trying to enter this experience with an open mind, with our time traveling meditation scheduled at the end of our trip, let's see what dimension these strange three days will send us. We've just arrived and getting a currently getting a walking tour of one of the outside temples and there is art and peculiar statues everywhere. I don't know what much of it means so far. Definitely very unusual. So Damanur was born with the idea of creating the seed of a new civilization. If you wanted to be central for the world, awesome the spiritual plane, what would that place need? Some strong energy center? Exactly. When the founders arrived here, they came here after traveling for several years around the world, exactly looking for what were the main energy places on the planet where ancient civilizations thrived. Mm. This valley is on the meeting point of four of these energy lines that we call synchronic lines. So it is a very special energy point in the world. Mm. I didn't understand a single word that woman just said. I'm like, mm hmm, the energy paths, huh? I know what that means. Damanhur was founded in 1975 by Oberto Eraudi with 24 followers. The society was created with its own constitution, currency system, and a coded language that only they understand. The inspiration for many of the Damanhurian practices supposedly came from the study of ancient civilizations and practices invented by their founder who passed away in 2013. So you're taking the best of, of ancient uh, civilizations and techniques, practices, techniques. and then we created new disciplines where we can reach the results that those disciplines were meant to reach. Having grown up in a very non-spiritual family, this is uh, very outside of anything I've experienced before. But uh, trying to keep an open mind and see where this experience will take me. We believe the Earth was colonized by people that came from the stars. So we are not originally from here. Trillions and trillions of stars in the universe. How can we be so presumptuous yeah. to think we are the only ones it's existing? Very, it's, it's it just doesn't existence. make any sense even in terms of probability. We're being thrown straight into oh, it. I'm like fully in. I'm Mars ready. <laughs> fully in. I don't understand half the things you said. <laughs> I'm just excited to explore yeah. what, they're, what they're up to here. Yeah. <laughs> How do you decide how to build the, the rocks? So this is an interesting question and it's an interesting riddle for us also. 
because we don't really know. So, <laughs> the founder who was not an ordinary man. And one of the extraordinary things I saw him do, because I was there when he began, he took a stick and he started walking. And with this stick, he started tracing on the ground. And then he had told us to follow him with the limestone so that we could trace the lines. And he walked for weeks without ever stopping. And he drew this amazing complex of mazes and labyrinths, so complex, going up and down the mountains and around, and, and they're perfect. We measured them afterwards, we took aerial pictures, all the angles, the distances, everything is perfect. I asked him, how could you do this? Were you seeing this drawing on the ground? You were following the, how did you do this? He never replied, so we don't know. The more we ask questions, the more confusing things seem to become. Not only were we struggling to understand some of the conceptual explanations, but we were also feeling a level of discomfort with how elusive and mysterious the founder had been about his methods. At the same time, as people describe him as operating on an even playing field as everyone else, he also didn't seem to break down to anyone where much of it was coming from, leaving a lack of explanation about core parts of their practices to this day. Why do you think he wouldn't share like the things that he was seeing or the reasoning behind that? I, I feel like that would have given uh, a lot more grounding to these explanations of... But, uh, I think he didn't share at that moment because it wouldn't have made any sense. What do you mean when you say he's got more memory? What do you mean by that? Literally, he was not remembering just this lifetime, much more from the past. Mm. And he remembered the future too. He remembers the future? Yes, but it's not only him, many of us alive in these times mm. we remember the future. Do many? you remember the future? Yeah, yes, I have many memories of the future and I think that's why I'm here because if we remember we can think of it and we can create it maybe you also remember the future that's why you have this thing in you that things can be different <laughs> we are now making our way towards the temples I'm being pretty straight up that I have no idea what's going on or what they're talking about but hey time travel sounds cool I'm obviously skeptical of, of certain elements but I'm gonna stay open the whole the whole time I'm just planning on surrendering and you know form a more complete opinion after time travel <laughs> Hoping to put this initial conversation on pause, we were finally approaching what we were mostly looking forward to, the temples of humankind. A multi-level temple buried 100 feet underground that has been called the eighth wonder of the world. Hidden in secret until 1991, Italian police found out about the temple and threatened to demolish it. Upon being shown the temple, however, the police were completely stunned and gave their permission for its existence to continue. <laughs> Wait, this is the entrance? This is the lowest entrance of the temple. Entering deep into the underground. Whoa, wow, okay. okay. So they cut through all of this? Yeah. yeah. And that it? How long did that take? Uh, 15 years of excavation. 8,500 square meter, more or less. Yeah. Are you ready? Shall we go? Uh, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. The, the vividness is uh, overpowering, like in a great way. You just feel like a sense of life with, with the amount of colors in here. It's really interesting because usually when you see rooms that have this type of art, it's a depiction of an ancient some something in history. But here you see people wearing like a polo t-shirt. Is that you? Yeah, that's me playing Risk. That is our table. Look at, look at that up there, it's 3D. This is, a, this is a lot. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. I really can't say I can compare it to anything else I've seen. So, what is this room? This is the whole spheres that is dedicated for to personal meditation, but also to the connection with the energetical network of the planet. Is it normal that I can't tell if it's just 
sleep deprivation or or I actually feel like I'm very sensitive towards energy and ever since we came down here I felt a sense of distortion. From an energetic perspective, this is one of the key points of the whole complex. Mm. So it makes sense that here you feel a little bit like that. People probably think I'm crazy saying all of that. <laughs> it's almost tiring to be in there. I don't know if that's a good or whatever, but it's being in there is like now one of the most interesting ones for sure. What? Wow. Oh my god. Wow. I was not expecting this. It just keeps getting more and more surprising. Look at it, the more like crazy details you start to make out. It's an Egyptian painting that, as I was saying, was used in, uh, in the beginning of the temple to cover the secret passages. Whoa. <laughs> Definitely one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. that it's you know ever evolving mm -hmm. and it's new people come to put new art and new knowledge that you know represents a bit more of who we are on this planet. I mean I've never seen anything like this. One of the craziest things I've ever seen in every sense of the word like crazy in terms of spectacular and the amount of detail and then also in just like I, I don't even know how to describe it. This is one of the most bizarre places on the entire planet. And after traveling to every country, I think I've got a pretty solid opinion on that. So you just never know what's around every corner. And whoa, we're just just like that. We're outside. Wow. So casual. <laughs> I was not expecting this. We were like in a gallery and now we're... This looks like a time traveling machine. <laughs> this specific device can perceive and monitor the aura, that is the energetic field around our body, and then direct this energy where she see that this energy is lacking. So it's kind of healing or so in that sense. Sorry, what is, what is this? So, è un portale dimensionale. So, this is a dimensional portal? <laughs> okay. <laughs> done some research about the time structure and how time works. Dopo questa cabina si passa attraverso il portale per spostarsi in una dimensione in cui it works, it's real. That is the practical approach that we have in experimenting things. It gets more strange by the hour. All of it. I don't know, man. I don't know what we're doing right now. What? Do, do I breathe? Do I think about something? I guess we'll leave you two alone. See you. Bye bye. See if we'll be back or not. I'm a little worried leaving him in there. <laughs> um. The only sensation that I felt was some sort of like a, uh, no, not just my breath expanding and contracting, but like everything around me was like feeling like this. I don't know how to explain it, and I honestly, what? I'm just more confused than even when I walked in, so. <laughs> what? The thing is that it's so hard to tell. There's so many variables, there's so many stimulants. But to me, I think if it makes them happy and if it makes them productive and if it makes them loving towards each other and towards the planet, then who are we to judge? We are on our way to one of the four Damaharian communities. It's been a very difficult situation to figure out <laughs> how to experience without uh, blatantly disbelieving or 
making fun of it. Yeah. It's a little bit exhausting to be here, honestly. I, I keep asking questions to try to get tangible answers, and well, you, you eventually arrive at a place where they say, well, actually, we have no idea. To take a break from the magic talk, we wanted to get a glimpse into how some of the locals actually live. Although most of them live in big communal buildings with 10 to 20 people, some have built alternative living cabins that a local who's been living here for over two decades was happy to show us. So everyone in Damanhur has an animal. Their name is the name of an animal. Is that how it works? Well, every Damanhurian can choose if they want, when they want, an animal name. This is uh, our tree house. We live here with gorilla. Okay, I am an ant, he's a gorilla. We are both black, but different size, of course. Gorilla is my husband. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, welcome wow. to my tree house. This is pretty amazing. Wow. Oh. This was the first um, room, and this is our new side of the house. So it is a vibe in here. <laughs> I love this. Yes. Actually, we are inside of three oak trees. When it rains, snow completely, it's all white. Wow. If someone has a dream in Damano, it can, it can happen. But this is so important to give space to individual dreams because the path is to become dreamers. Sounds oddly familiar. <laughs> I really like the emphasis on dreams here. In my mind, I thought they were talking about it in a very me metaphorical sense, but they're actually talking about like literally what people's dreams are and the space that is available for them to make these dreams happen. So for her, she wanted to live in a tree house. This guy wanted to live in a house that follows the sun and they make space available here for all of that. It's moving very slowly. Bye. <laughs> In our final experiment, we were going to attempt a form of meditation called past life regression, which supposedly allows you to connect with your spirits from past lives. So today we could try an experiment with you and see if we can open a different dimension, that is the dimension of time. Time is an illusion, yet a very persisting one. If time is like a territory, just like we know that we are here, but Paris still exists, we can also imagine that there are points in time they're still existing, so that their time is all simultaneous. Is there a version of me that was alive a month ago that is also existing right now? Somehow, yes. Because I'm, I'm experiencing this exact moment, but and there's a future me that's also experiencing the future at this moment. That's very good. Not many people get to that conclusion, <laughs> bravo, but yes. As soon as you start talking about time, there are endless amounts of paradoxes that are hard to grapple with. But as this particular exercise requires us to stay totally open-minded, we decided to completely surrender and see if anything meaningful could come up. All right, here we go. A deep breath to dive to the other side of the second door, taking you to a different place, a different time, different sensations, different memories. How different is this face? And is it a young face? or an older face. Feel the body as they're standing. Are they standing proud? There's something special in the life of this person that they want to show you. An object that was dear to them. Maybe it's a book, maybe it's a stone. So concentrate on your hearing. After the meditation was complete, we had time to reflect on our experience. But I was swimming with crocodiles. It wasn't necessarily danger, danger but they were my friends and the other moment it was just like a clenched fest up in the air. Mine started in uh, like a sand, like a sandy like place. It kind of felt like it could be Egypt potentially. There was a ship that I was on and it looked like jungle, like jungle and some kind of like indigenous tribe and I saw like a gold, like a gold face. Oh and also I definitely felt like a man. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite extraordinary. Yeah. <laughs> you see the difference? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I saw a trail of people that were wearing fur. I moved into the body of the person uh, in the front that was trying to find the, the trail above the mountains. My mission was to try to figure out where that, like how we're going to get above these mountains. And we were able to find like a safe little cave area and they were in there. And I looked up and I still saw um, the eagle and in a weird way in that moment it felt like the eagle was me now 
telling this previous version of myself that we'll be safe. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, we just finished a time traveling workshop. You know, the pragmatic part of me wants to explain it as a part of my imagination, but I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here, but maybe I just time traveled. Our interpretation of a place has never felt more perplexing and confusing. At the same time as we were impressed by the temples, appreciated the intentionality in their systems of co-living, and clearly experienced something during some of the meditations they walked us through, there was too much that required leaps of belief for us not to feel a sense of suspicion around much of what they were saying. The community has clearly survived almost 10 years without the presence of their founder, but many of their practices are still based on some of his pseudo-scientific inventions. As we met people who had once been a part of this community, then left and finally come back, it seems that people are free to make their own decisions. And so with these people, certainly not being the only ones on this planet with supernatural beliefs, who are we to judge at the end of the day? We will never vouch for something we don't understand and are honestly to this day uncertain about what we experienced in these three days and might live the rest of our lives without ever fully having a clear answer. But isn't that also true about our understanding of life's most complicated questions? We'll see you in two weeks. Okay, we'll get back to this video in a second, but I'm here at the Yes House because I want to let you in on a secret. Hey, what are you guys filming? Uh, just a video about math. Yeah, math. I, uh, good luck. I don't want any part of that. Anyhow, back to my secret, <clears throat> which I obviously try to keep from everybody at the S house because as the gift giver slash buyer, I want to make sure that I have the advantage. So I've been using Honey, which is the online shopping tool that is sponsoring today's video. Honey is great because it automatically searches for promo codes so you don't have to do it. This way I can buy our team gifts and still have some money left over for Tristan. Oh, he's, he's gonna love this. Honey works on your favorite sites with things that you're already buying. And it's kind of fun to see how much money you can save. Wait, we don't make videos about math. So make sure you add it to your browser and you can sign up at joinhoney.com slash yes theory. And square root of four is two.